green, the color of Faror, the goddess of courage, and all life in Hyrule. And since Skyward Sword, the depths of Faron's lush forests have been home to the statue of the goddess of courage. At the same time in Breath of the Wild, this region beside a tower, shrines, shrine quests, and Koroks had little to no impact on the main quest as it, along with the Nekluda and Akala, were the only ones in Hyrule to not have a divine beast or champion of its own. A forgotten and more importantly filled with jungles province, full of distant mysteries that we will explore deeper after you have made sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and press that notification bell as it helps a ton. Now then, let's get inside Breath of the Wilds 2's Hyrule with me, Conrad, and for the last time, Joseph. Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of Inside Breath of the Wild 2. Today we are exploring what is my favorite province in Breath of the Wild, excluding a certain mountain where I have a certain shield surfing addiction, Farron, the greenest province of them all. This game area, which was heavily underused in Breath of the Wild, hides remnants of a crucial, mysterious, warlike tribe and civilization for the sequel, which since the distant past has been busy with keeping Ganondorf sealed away. Fittingly enough, nature is in charge of this part of Hyrule as one massive jungle with lakes and rivers, sandy beaches and a stable and a remote, though more important than we could possibly imagine, fishing village. Farron is likely the greatest to Breath of the Wild too, and thus the most important province we had to cover before we moved elsewhere. In particular, since Farron is an overlapping province with Lake Hylia on one side and East Nekluda on the other. This province is a little bit of an oddball, as its boundaries are not set in stone. This shouldn't come as a surprise, since no civilization has permanently settled in the humid and overgrown lands of the Zonai for tens of thousands of years. Even so, we can divide this province into two geographical areas. West and East Farron will both have a Sheikah Tower, and following this line, we can outline the invisible border of Farron. In the west, it is found in the Farron grasslands, though in the distant past, it may have stretched all the way to the South Lome Labyrinth in East Gerudo lands. The southern border is quite easy to define, as it is the Farron Sea. The northern is a little trickier, but can be set at the northern gate of Lake Hylia, with Hyrule though in the distant past, it may have stretched all the way up to the Forest of Time because of the presence of Zonai Towers. But Lake Hylia is a magical border, as it is the home of Farosh, the dragon. Similarly to how Jabu Jabu was the guardian deity of the Zora civilization in Lanayru, the spirit dragon of lightning and courage was the deity of the Zonai warriors. But we will return to that soon enough. The northern border of Farron is further outlined by Farosh Hills, the Spring of Courage, Mount Floria, Courage Step, and Dunsul Plateau, which overlaps with eastern Nekludia. The eastern border of the province, though, also overlapping with Nekludia, is found at Larulin Village and the Palmore Ruins. With our borders nicely laid out, we will in the rest of this video target key areas connecting Farron with the mysterious Zonai tribe. This journey will bring us to Lake Hylia and Farosh, Farron Woods, Zonai Ruins, Rakosa River, Lake and the Spring of Courage, Guccini Plain, Floria River, and Lake Floria and finally Lurelin village and Palmeray. The courageous warlike tribe of Farron could have come from Gerudo lands in the west, more specifically Arbiter's Grounds before spreading from there to the border of Gerudo and from there further and further east. Obviously, that would imply that they were the descendants of, of the interlopers and Twily. This is actually quite possible as it's likely that they were one of the human-like tribes of Hyrule, but which was wilder and less civilized than the Hylians, Sheikah and Gerudo. Hence, they were called barbarians, similarly to how the Greeks and 
and Romans in our world called Northern Tribes, which in their eyes were primitive barbarians. Though the origins of the Zonai remains a mystery, what we do know is that the Zonai Lome was not a tribe you messed with or wanted to face in battle. For one, as they set courage in life and battle as their highest virtue, and were powerful magic-wielding individuals. The latter is another clue to the Zonai's possible connection to the interlopers and the Twi'li, but more on that later. Since the guardian deity of the Zonai and Lomai has no doubt always been Farish and the spirit dragon of lightning, which resides in the depths of Lake Hylia. First coming out upon Link's prayers at the Spirit of Courage, there is no doubt that Farosh shared a very close connection and trust to the Zonai. They, in return, honored their guardian deity with engravings and statues across the land of Hyrule, and in particular, Farin. Statues of the powerful spirit can be found from Farin Woods in the west to Lake Floria, in the east with the center located along Dracozu River, and finally Lake, where we find the holiest of Zonai sites, the Spring of Courage, and the massive statue of the Zonai Dragon. This entire area is infested with enemies likely spawned by Ganondorf to prevent Link from reaching the Spring of Courage. However, the primary settlement was likely at Zonai Ruins and close to Guccini Plain, where we find massive vertical Zonai Towers, which purposefully still remain a mystery, and these massive bird-like statues. Following along Floria River, we see more Zonai architecture until we reach the Lakeside Stable, where we find additional Zonai structures, which could have been a defensive point, Floria Bridge, built by the Zonai in the distant past, Lake Floria, and finally Ibarra Forest, where all traces of Zonai architecture end until after crossing Atun Valley, where we end up in Laurelin Village. And here we have to address the symbol of the Zonai and Lomai the mysterious swirl which clearly resembles the village symbol only reversed, and can also be found on the traditional fishermen dresses of the inhabitants of the village. The inhabitants of Laurelin, though hospitable, didn't play any significant role in Breath of the Wild, though they are known for their shock arrows sold for a reasonable price at the fish market. This is a clear connection to the Zonai, as we believe the Shock Arrow is a weapon dating back to the Zonai in the distant past and their obsession with Farosh and the Spirit of Lightning's defenses. This could explain why Ganondorf equipped the enemies in this area with this deadly and disarming weapon of the Zonai and Lomai. Anyway, back to Lorelin and its inhabitants, as it is quite likely that they are the last descendants of the mysterious Zonai. But how did they end here, far away from their original home? It may sound a little simple, but probably the same way the Sheikah made it to Kakariko from Hateno and Akala. They were forced by the Hylians to abandon the former capital close to the Spring of Courage and resettle to the coast beyond their former homeland, which in the east ended after Lake Floria. Well, at least that's where the ruins after them end. If you want a full-fledged theory on how the tragedy of the Sheikah and Zonai was very similar, then we have a 19 minute long theory detailing it all in depth here in the tab and the end card waiting for you after this video. Anyway, after losing their homeland, which became an abandoned jungle with exception of the main road leading to the new home, the Zonai who once were feared for their courage, weapons, skill in combat and magical powers, were forced by the Kingdom of Hyrule to abandon their way of life and become simple fishermen in tropical Lorelin. An impoverished and simple coastline village with only one source of income and survival, namely the fish they could catch in Nekluda and Farren Seas. But are there any other signs other than the village symbol and shock arrows that connect Lorelin to the Zonai? In fact there is, since close to the village we find the Palmeray ruins with Zonai ruins, what could in Breath of the Wild 2 be the entrance to one of the Zonai temples? This entire location does share some resemblance to the temple we saw presented in the reveal trailer, and it is no doubt important, seeing that we have a mirror with old text in front of it that one of the inhabitants of Laurelin, Garini, understands without any greater difficulties. Also, similarly to the luminous stones, the text glows in the dark, suggesting that this is Zonai text from the distant past, and that the mirror is powered by the same spirit energy source that many have speculated are crucial to Ganondorf's seal in the reveal trailer for the sequel to Breath of the Wild. The fact that there is a blessing shrine here further hints at the importance of this location, seeing that all the shrine Sheikah monks and monk Maskoshia are testing the hero that hopefully will be able to get rid of the true source of evil in Hyrule, Ganondorf, and Demise's Curse. 
What do you think is the point of the Blessing Shrines? Let us know in the comments section down below. Now then, Palmore was our final destination in our journey of discovery across Farron. But before we leave the province, we need to go over one more area. The Zonai ruins surrounding Farron Tower at the other shore of Floria River. These ruins are often very overlooked, but are indeed massive and enshrouded in equally as big mystery. Though the theme of electricity prevails here, with whiz robes aiming to mess you up at every corner. Seriously, I hate those guys. But the point is that the jungle of Farron is full of Zonai ruins that might actually play a much bigger role in Breath of the Wild too. We don't know exactly what purpose they will serve, and that is what makes it so exciting. Since here we have a full province of mysteries and a tribe from Hyrule's distant past that we barely have scratched the surface of. Breath of the Wild 2 has definitely the Zonai and their disappearance in the distant past as one of the main themes, and with it a return to Farron and likely the exploration of Zonai temples seems to be unavoidable. But no matter what, we can't be more excited to see how the Zelda team will make Farron one of, if not, the most important province in Breath of the Wild 2. And that's Farron for you. Now then, we have set off, but where are we heading next? Obviously to one of the Labyrinth provinces. Or which one? But before we reveal which ones you can choose between, make sure to show some love for the work put into this video, and if you haven't already, leave a like, subscribe to the Commonwealth Realm, and if you haven't already, press that shiny notification bell so you don't miss the next episode, which depending on your vote will be Akala or Gerudo. Leave your reply in the comment section down below as you decide which one of them will be the next Inside Breath of the Wild 2. That episode will go up in two weeks time as next week will be dedicated to a Zelda theory that you don't want to miss. Thank you so much for watching. You can also not forget to thank all our gracious patrons and in particular royal producers Kenyatta Ali and Bradley Carriage. You can join them too as protector of the realm by heading over to patreon.com slash commonrealm.